Welcome to Probability and Statistics. In this lecture video, we're going to talk about chapter 3.2, the measure of dispersion. The word dispersion is referring to the spread of the data set. When we talk about the spread of your data, okay, we can use the word range, variance, and the word standard deviation to describe the spread of your data. All right, let's take a look at the range of raw data. Okay, you cannot have a range of a group data because you don't. You actually do not know the actual value. Okay, in a group data, so that's the reason why here we say the range is the difference between the maximum data value and the minimum data value. So all we're gonna do is take the largest number and subtract the smallest one. So, for example, <coughs> find the range of the following um, marked test statistic grade. So if I have this grade, I'm going to take the largest data value, which is 100, minus the smallest one, 70. And that will give me my range of 30 points spread. Alright, so what they're saying is, right, the spread of the data is about 30 points. Now it's funny though, if I want to find the range of this particular example, the largest number is 60 minus the, the smallest test grade is 30. That will actually give me the same spread. Okay, that will actually give me the same spread of my data. Okay, also as same as the previous problem. So even though the top example, most of the grades are on the higher end, down here the grades are on the lower end, but the spread of your data is actually the same amount. So the range is not really, okay, the range of a data set does not truly tell us exactly what's going on. Um, you know, it doesn't really tell us exactly what's going on with our test grades here, or doesn't tell us what's going on with our data. So a different way to talk about the spread of a data, which is use the word dispersion. All right, something called the variance and standard deviation. The worst deviation, all right, this is another way to talk about the spread of your data. Deviation means how far away are each data value is to the mean. Okay, each data to the mean. So if I want to find the distance of each data to the mean, okay, what we can do is we can list out our grade, okay, in an order, so I'm going to say 70, 88, 90, 72, and 100. Alright, so this is the spread of my data. How far is each data to the mean? Well, let's figure out the mean first. So I'm going to go to my calculator, okay. Uh, I'm going to add them all up. And then divide it by 5. So my mean is about 84. Alright, so the x bar is 84. Alright, so, so distance, so these are your xi, individual score is called xi. The distance to the mean that will be xi minus your mean, your x bar. All right. So from 70 minus 84, that will actually give me negative 14. Uh, let me just do it right here. All right. 88. To 84, that would be positive 4. 88 minus 84. 90 minus 84, 6. That would be 6. 72 minus 84. So you got to take 72 minus the 84, okay, which will give you negative 12. 100 minus. 
84, 16. So as you can see, the positive value, all right, the positive value means the actual score is above the mean. The negative value here means I am below the mean, 14 places below the mean. Okay, so this is about the distance to each test score from the mean. Now the word variance and standard deviation, both word represent on average how far is each data from the mean. It's referring to the average of all the scores to the mean, okay, on average. Here what you're looking at here is the individual score. So as a group together, on average, how far are they to the mean? That's called the variance and the standard deviation. And the difference between variance and standard deviation is the standard deviation is the square root of a variance. So here I wrote down the formulas, okay? So population variance, this symbol is called a sigma. Sigma is referring to standard deviation, population standard deviation. Sigma square is the population variance. So you see the difference between them is by the square root. Now for the simple variance, that will be S squared. Simple standard deviation is using the letter S. Okay. So all these formula look just alike. It's basically saying you take your XI, individual data, minus the mean, and then take everybody, square it, then you add them all up, then you divide it by so many you add it. Okay? So let me let me use this formula, okay, up here. So now I actually subtract it, okay, find the individual distance to the mean. So now I'm gonna say take individual data minus the mean and then I'm going to square everybody. The reason why we square is because that will make all these distances become positive. So negative 14, excuse me, parenthesis, negative 14, whole thing squared, give me 196. 4 squared is 16, 6 squared is 36, Negative 12 whole thing squared, 144. And 16 squared, 256. Alright, so we find the mean first, subtract each data to the mean, get the distance to the, from the, you know, get the distance to the mean. Then we square everybody. Then the next thing we do is summation. Add them all up. So let's see if I add them all up. I get 644. And I take my 644 divided by so many that we added, which is five numbers. Okay. And 128.8. This will be the variance. So, to find the standard deviation, sigma, so variance is sigma squared. So, to find sigma, we'll just take a square root of my 128.8 so 11.3 something is about 11.3 so this is called the standard deviation so what does the word standard deviation mean it means on average each one of these score is about 11.3 places above or below the mean. They can either be 11.3 place above it, the mean 84, or below the mean 84. 
Okay, that's what standard deviation represents. So the fact is, we actually want the standard deviation to be small. The smaller the standard deviation represents, the smaller the spread of your data. All right. So I just want to show you all the formulas. Okay, we're not going to be using these formulas that much. We're going to type in into our calculators to do this. And I will show you that just in a minute with another example. So real quick, uh, just a quick refresh your memory on the notations. All right, sigma squared, population variance. Sigma, population, standard deviation. S squared, sample variance. S is sample standard deviation. X bar is your sample mean. Mu, population mean. Capital letter N is population size, lowercase n, sample size, and your XI means I's data value in your whole entire set. Okay. So, real quick, for example, this um, is your steps on the raw data. And remember, um, in the 3.1 correction, some of your calculator will have the thing called the X list. And um, then it will have a word frequency and the word calc, calculate, uh, which is different than my calculator. All right, so for the raw data, there is nothing under frequency. Okay, do not put anything on the frequency. Your X list should be under L1. All right, and let me show you press calc. Highlight calc and press enter. All right, so you got this on your handouts. So let's look at this raw data. Calculator sample standard deviation. All right, make sure we watch what it's saying. Sample standard deviation for the following data set. Use the rounding rule for the standard deviation. The rounding rule means every data here has three decimal places. When we round, we just round one extra one. So we will write down four decimal places for final answer. So let's go back to stat. Choose number one, edit. All right, I'm going to clear out whatever I got here. I'm going to type in this numerical value. So this is a lot of number, so it's not really practical for us to do do this by hand. Okay, slugging percentage for the leading major league baseball player. So out of all these data, okay, on average, how far is from each data to the mean? So once I entered it, press stat, highlight the word calc, choose number one, one variable statistics. I uh, only typing my numerical value on the L1, so I'm gonna say second L1. Okay. If you did a little different than me, you would just have X list on the L1. Nothing in the frequency. Highlight the word highlight and press enter on the word calc. Alright. So my standard deviation. So see the X bar right here? That's my mean. Alright. Since this is a sample standard deviation, we have to look at S. S of X. Okay. You cannot look at sigma. Sigma is referring to population. Four decimal places. 0 0.0359. Alright, so my simple standard deviation. 0 0.0359. If they want variance, if they want variance, okay. What you gotta do is take all these decimals and then square it. Because the difference between standard deviation and variance is by the square root. So if you go backwards, okay, 
you will have to square the whole thing. So if you want the if the question asking for variance, then you're gonna type in all these numbers. Point zero three five nine excuse me. Three five eight five eight seven eight seven four. Typing as many as you can square. Then I'll give you a variance. Point zero zero one three. Okay, if it's asking for it. But for this problem, it's only asking for the standard deviation. <laughs> Alright, let's try an example with the group data. So group data, the key difference is the midpoints is under L1, then you're typing your frequency under L2. Alright, so this is the calculating the sample, standard deviation again, and the sample variance the heart rate okay of American adults use the rounding rule so everybody is whole number so we will round one decimal place so let's find the uh, uh, midpoint first before I can find midpoint we're gonna find the width so the width is two consecutive lower class limit or upper class limit the difference between two consecutive lower or upper class limits. So 67 minus 61. Tell me the width is 6. Alright, class midpoint of the first class. We add up the lower class limit with the upper class limit first. Divided by 2. So that will be 63.5. Alright. Now from now on. I'm just going to add 6 to it. So that will give me 69.5. Alright, let's add 6 to it. 75.5. Add 6 to it. We get 81.5. Add 6 to it, 87.5. Alright, so these are my class midpoint. So I'm going to go back to my stat. Number 1, edit. I'm going to go up to the top on the L1. Let's clear this thing out. Typing my midpoint. Go to the right, type in my frequency. Right. My bottom row will match up, so everything is good to go. So, go back to stack, highlight the word calc. All right, choose number one, one variable statistics. So this time I type in numerical value under L1 and L2. So I'm going to say second L1, comma, second L2, and press entry. So my standard deviation, all right, 8.4. My simple standard deviation, about 8.4. All right, looking for the S, okay. My variance, my S squared. So now I'm going to just square all these numbers. I'm going to type in 8.374411575 and square that. Now one decimal place, about 70.1. Alright, that will be my variance. Now, if you have, if your calculator look like this, then this time, for this problem, you got to have X list on the L1, your frequency got to be on the L2. Okay, and highlight the word calculate and press enter. You should have the same thing as I do. Alright, and that's how we figure out <coughs> simple standard deviation and simple variance.
Another topic uh, we want to talk about, and this this topic will actually be with us for um, for rest of semester after chapter four. Okay, something called the empirical rule, and you also need to um, use the empirical rule for the first project. All right. It turns out if a data has a distribution that is bell curve shape. Okay, if my histogram shows a bell curve shape, we can use what we so-called the empirical rule to determine the, the percentage of data that will lie within K standard deviation of the mean. Remember, standard deviation means on average what each data value is to the mean as a group together. Okay. So empirical rule tells us the percentage of my data that will be within k so many standard deviation away from the mean. Okay, so let me make this graph slightly smaller so we can all see it. All right, so let me explain to you. If I have a bell curve shape, okay, it's symmetric. Therefore, the mean is always right here in the center. If I go one standard deviation to the right, okay. There will be one standard deviation above the mean. One place to the left is one standard deviation below the mean. Okay, so within one standard deviation, it will cover 68% of your data. 68% of the data is within one standard deviation away. Two standard deviation above and below the mean, that will cover 95% of your data. So basically what we are saying here is from here to here in this graph, okay, this curve covers 95% of my data. Okay, it should include 95% of the data. If I go three standard deviation to the above or below the mean, okay, that will actually cover 99.7% of the data. All right. So, the three numbers you got to memorize first, 68, 95, and 99.7, okay, these are the three numbers. So, what you can do to figure this out is to say, okay, if the middle is 68%, the next one is 95, take 95 minus 68, that will give me 27, and the 27% is referring to this spot in this spot right here together so each one we will just divide it by two okay that's how we get 13.5 all right to figure out the 2.4 percent here all right we know the the third number 99.7 minus 95 that give you 4.7 divided by two each one is 2.35, 2.35, or we can say 2.4. All right, if you want to find out the outside the three standard deviation, okay, to the right and to the left of three, three standard deviation from the mean, we take the 100% minus the 99.7, which is 0.3, okay, divided by two, that will tell you this is 0 0.15, 0 0.15 at a time. And the reason why you only say 0.1 is because earlier we rounded, so here we don't have to, uh, here we don't have the extra 5. Okay. Alright, so, with this picture in mind, okay, suppose the IQ score have a bell curve shape distribution. So when you see that, your mind should thinking about the bell curve distribution. I don't draw it very pretty. With the mean 97 right here in the middle, with a standard deviation of 18. Okay. So that means on average all the data is about plus or minus 18 places from the mean. Alright. What percentage IQ score there are greater than 151? So when you hear the word 151, you know this number is above the mean, to the right of your mean. So if we go one standard deviation to the right, that will be 97 plus the standard deviation. 
that will give me 115. If I go another standard deviation to the right of it, which is plus another 18, which is 133. If I go one more, plus 15 more, this is three standard deviation from the mean, plus 18 more, excuse me. Now give me 151. So what percentage of IX score are greater than 151? So that would be to the right of the third standard deviation. So if you look at right here, this is 0.1, but the calculator earlier shows 0.15. So we will use the 0.15 instead. So right here will be 0.15, 15%, excuse me, 0.15%. 0.15% is, ooh, that's real small, 0 0.0015. All right, so again, let me show you how this works, okay? So you got to find, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> got to find the 151 first. Once we figure out 151, that's three standard deviation to the right, then we can say, okay, 100 minus that 99.7, okay, give me 0.3, and I only need one of these. 0.3 is the right side and the left side together. So when I divide it by two, I get 0.15%. So 0.15% IQ score is greater than 151 points. All right, same idea. Suppose that a grade point average of undergrad undergraduate students in one university has a bell curve distribution with a mean 2.61 so our GPA you know what well, I'll, I'll redraw it let's say our GPA all right let's say mean is right here in the center the average GPA is 2.61 standard deviation is 0.4 at a time use an empirical rule to find the percentage of students that is between these two numbers all right, so 2.21 is below the mean. So if I take the mean, 2.61 minus the standard deviation, that will be 2.21. So 2. Point, so I found this number. This number is only one standard deviation below the mean. If I take 2.61 plus the standard deviation 0.4, I found the other number, 3.01. So the other number is only is also one standard deviation above the mean. So these two numbers are one standard deviation and one standard deviation above and below the mean. So how many percent? So right here, only one standard deviation will be 68% of your data. Okay, so make sure you memorize the charts, okay? And know how to derive individual number that's in here. So make sure you memorize the first, you know, these key three. <coughs> All right, so my answer, 68%. Well, let's try another one. IQ score at bell curve shape distribution, mean 96. Right. Standard deviation 14 this time. The question is, what's the IQ score that's no more than, no more than 110? No more than 110. So, all right, let me draw you another picture here. distributed mean is 96 standard deviation 14 at a time no more than 110 well let's find 110 first 110 is above the mean so that will be 96 plus the standard deviation 14 110 is right here so 110 is one standard deviation above the mean but the question says no more than that so that's referring to 
all the score below 110. Okay, so think about this. How many percent is this? Well, the mean is symmetric. So that means to the left of the mean is the other 50%. Okay, once the deviation above the mean or below is 68%, half of that will make it 34%. So if you add up the two, your answer will be 84% of your data. That will be no more than 110. So if I go back to the original picture, okay, the 110 is right here, one standard division above it. So I need everybody to the left of this. So the 34 plus the other half, 50%, make it 80, 84%. <coughs> okay, that's how we figure it out. So the answer, the answer is telling us that 84% of the data of the people who took the IQ score is below is no more than 110. All right. Suppose that a diameter of a new species of apple have bell curve distribution with a mean of 7.2 centimeter, standard deviation of 0.38. What percentage of the diameter there are at least? Okay. So this example saying at least. All right, so let me draw you the normally distributed uh, mean is 7.2. At least 6.44. Let's find 6.44. This number is below the mean. So let's subtract 7.2 minus the standard deviation 0 0.38, 6.82. That's one standard deviation below the mean. I subtract one more time 0.38 aha I found my 6.44 so what are we looking at at least okay means at least 6.44 means 6.44 and more okay if I say I got at least six dollars in my pocket, that means I have six dollars and more. So what we need to look at, okay, is from the six point four four to the right. All right, two standard deviation below the mean. So normally we think two standard deviation is ninety five percent. Okay. So let's figure this out. Two standard deviation is 95. So if I take 95 minus the center part, which is 68, that will give me 27. 27 divided by 2, because I need just this part right now, 13.5. So this slot is 13.5. And previous example tell you from the center to first standard deviation is 34%. Okay, so that will be 13.5, 34, and the other half. Okay, so that will be 13.5 plus the 34 plus the other half. Okay, that will give me 97.5 percent. I'm going to type this out. This is one way to do it. There's another way to look at this. Alright, this is true standard deviation below the mean. So how much you do not want? What is this you do not want? So what we can do is to say, alright. Three standard deviation outside of two standard deviation. Okay, outside of two standard deviation. Two standard deviation is 
So 100 minus the 95 will give me 5%. Uh, this 5% is the outside of the 95, which is on both sides together. So I do not want just one side of it. So divided by 2, because I need the other side, which is 2.5% that I do not want. So, what we can do is to say, take the 100%, the whole thing is 100% minus what I do not want, that will give me what I wanted, 97.5%, okay? This right here is very, very powerful technique, okay? We'll talk more about this technique in chapter four. All right, so that will uh, conclude our lecture video. So in this video, we talk about range, standard deviation, variance, and we are talking about this thing called the empirical rule. Oh, one more thing before I come um, before I end. Um, Chebyshev theorem. Um, although empirical rule is handy for bell curve, bell shape distribution, it cannot be applied to any other type of distributions. Okay. Now, however. The Chebyshev theorem is helpful when the empirical rule cannot be used. Okay, but the Chebyshev theorem here only gives a minimal estimate. Okay, it is less accurate estimation than the empirical rule. So, the Chebyshev theorem is saying that the proportion of data that lies within so many standard deviations of the mean is at least one minus. 1 over k square, okay? So k means so many standard deviation away. So if I'm one standard deviation away, we will say 1 minus 1 over, um, you know, 1 squared, which is just going to be 1. If my standard deviation will be, mm, let's say, let me use this example right here, the last one we did. Standard deviation is 0.3 eight centimeter. So by the Chebyshev theorem there will be one minus parenthesis one divided by standard deviation point three eight squared. Okay. Let me go back. Make sure I do it right. Alright, for K is bigger than one. So since my K wasn't bigger than one, um it wasn't really you know, I can't really use it. My standard deviation was a decimal. My standard deviation normally need to be bigger than one. So maybe that wasn't a very good um, example to use. Uh, let me find another one. Standard deviation is bigger than one. Oh, use this one right here. One minus parenthesis one divided by my k is eighteen squared. <coughs> okay, about ninety nine. 0.6%. All right. So if k is at least two, that would be what? If k is equal to two, at, at least 75% data lie within okay two standard deviation from the mean. Okay. So all it is saying is approximately how many percent lie within the mean. Our example earlier is saying, okay, one standard deviation away, okay, that should cover at least, you know, so many percent, okay? But since this is a bell curve shape, of course, this numerical number does not make sense for the empirical rule because the Chebyshev theorem is designed for a distribution that is not bell curve shape, okay? It's an estimation, it's an estimation. Alrighty, so that will conclude our lecture video.